do you have a wig that needs some height in the crown? Uh, either because you're like me and you're part of the flat-headed tribe, um, or because uh, it would help it just fit a little bit better, or because you have a round face and a little height on top would make it a little bit more flattering. I have a super easy fix for any time you need a little poof in the crown, so keep watching for details. Hi, I'm Christine, and I am on a campaign to make wig wearing more mainstream, so we can express ourselves any way we want and not have somebody look at us sideways just because we happen to be wearing a wig. For practical tips on choosing and wearing wigs, wig reviews, as well as a little bit of creative inspiration, please subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video. Uh, what I'm wearing right now is Ellen Villa's Impact in the color, I think it's pastel rooted blonde, but if I'm wrong, I will put it on a graphic on the screen. I had worn this wig in my video for wigs for round faces, but I had taken it right out of the box without having done anything to it. And here, I'll show you on the screen what it looked like. Um, since then, I have trimmed the bangs and toned it using my purple acrylic ink dye toning method, which I will link that down in the description box as well. Now I have an average sized circumference at 22 inches, but my hairline to nape measurement and my ear to ear are both so short that they're almost child petite size. So an average wig will fit me comfortably around here, but will often have a whole lot of space up in here. Let me see if I can show you. I mean, that's me holding the bangs down and I have all this room in the crown between the wig and my head. Okay, let's get it back to <laughs> where it was. At first I tried petite sized wigs, but although they fit in the crown, they were so tight around here that they were uncomfortable. And I'm the kind of person who doesn't like to wear uncomfortable shoes, let alone a wig. So I kept working on the problem and I came up with a super easy solution. I put basic old quilt batting in the crown of my wigs. Now this one does not have any in it right now, and I wanted to show you um, how it was, how flat it was without the quilt batting, and you already saw how much I could grab up in here. Now I do the quilt batting trick with probably at least half my wigs, either because they're too big in the crown or because with my face shape, it's more flattering for me to have a little bit of height up there. All I do is go to Hobby Lobby or Joann's, get some quilt batting and cut out circles and pin them in the crown of the wig. And I'm going to show you in detail how I do that right now. First, I lay out the batting and cut it into narrower strips. I fold it over a couple of times. It doesn't matter how many times you fold it over. And I cut out multiple circles at a time. How big or small you make the circles depends on the size of your head. I make mine uh, probably about three to four inches in diameter. But this is not a real precise process. So just um, do some trial and error on the size. Then I take my wig. This one is Impress by Ellen Villa. I place the batting right where I think the crown is. Usually there's some kind of a seam right in the center of the crown, so I try and line up the center of the batting with that. Then I just use safety pins to keep it in place. Then I try on the wig and I just keep adjusting the batting, either the location of where it is or how much I want to put in or take out. The beauty of this method is its versatility. You can add just a single layer if you want to fill out the gap in a crown, uh, or you can use two or three layers to get height on a flat wig that may be more flattering for you. Now, here is the finished product. I'll put a picture on the screen of what it looked like before. Now, um, the effect may be subtle. Um, I'm hoping you can pick it up on camera. 
I've got three layers of quilt batting in here, and it's done two things. It's given me some extra height in the crown, with, which with my round face is a little bit more flattering, and it's gotten rid of that feeling like I have that gap up there that you know, my wig is not attached to my head. I also really like the kind of Bridget Bardot height it gives me. I think that look is very flattering and I hope it comes back. Um, now I will show you the back. Now all I did was safety pin these in, in the crown. And because I have a rooted wig, you cannot see it at all. Um, I can't even feel the pins. Don't even know where they are. But if you have a light colored wig that's not rooted, just find some thread that's the same color as the hair and put two little knots in there and it'll hold fine. And since it's quilt batting, it's totally washable. So you don't even have to take it out when you wash your wigs. Now getting a wig to fit well makes all the difference. So the few minutes it takes for me to put the quilt batting in is well worth it. To me, it's no different than moving the adjuster straps in the nape of the wig. And in fact, I keep a whole pile of these. I will cut out a whole bunch of them and just keep them. And anytime I need them, they're there for me to put in a wig. Two minutes. Now I am always looking for more ways to personalize my own wigs and help you learn to make your wigs fit better and look better and feel better. So if you have tips, uh, please leave them in the comments below. Let me know if you try this or if you have another way that you add height in the crown. Also, leave a comment down below letting me know what issues you're having with your wigs that you'd like to get some tips and tricks for. For more content like this, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button and leave a comment because that all helps YouTube decide to show my videos to more people, which is the best way I can get the word out that wigs are just one more easy but powerful way to express yourself.